Welcome back everyone. We're here today looking at the just released Milk V Duo 256 Meg. This just came out in the last month. I just managed to get my hands on one. So I thought we could look at it together and see what this actually does or what they've changed, which is quite a bit, believe it or not. So first of all, I just want to say as well, I'm going to be doing a hundred dollar giveaway in this. Uh, Hang around to the end to find out more. I'll tell you about it then. But over $100 uh, worth of stuff, including Milk V stuff. So definitely hang around. Um, also, a big thanks to PCB Way. They are continuing to sponsor this channel. Uh, they're not sponsoring the giveaway. That's all me, but that's perfectly fine. What they do, though, is uh, PCB prototyping, like 10 boards for $5. Uh, there's a link below as well. You can get $5 off your first order using my link there. Um, they do assembly... Uh, they do part sourcing, they do 3D printing, CNC milling, all sorts of stuff. They've also got a really good store where you can go and buy stuff. Like I buy a lot of the tools that I need now. Every time I order a PCB, I buy you know, some new ESD tweezers or something like that. And they also have a project section. So projects that you're working on, you can actually put in there and then other people can order it and you get money and um, some rewards points from that. So it's a really, really good system. And I've not used their 3D printing before, but I'm about to and uh, I'd expect it's gonna be as good quality as everything else. 3D printing is always finicky though. Once that project arrives, which you may or may not get to see, I'm probably gonna print some 3D cases for these Milk V duos and have them in the store for you as well. So, thanks again to PCBWay, link below to get five bucks off. They support us, you should support them. They're also good people. Back to the Milk V Duo 256. Now, I've got a few of these in stock. A supply is limited, they're $23.85. And I've got free shipping on all orders over $25 within Australia now. So go ahead and get yourself one if you want. Or again, I'm going to give one and some other stuff away at the end worth over $100. So hang around for that. I do have more of the normal Milk V uh, 64 megs there as well with headers attached. And I'll probably get some of these with the headers as well. We'll just see how they go. Now, they've changed a fair bit. As you can see, if we pull one up and compare it to the old board... Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to edit that video a bit. So this is a 64 meg. This is the 128 meg. And, sorry, 256 meg. And you can see they're almost exactly the same. But on the left, it's got a different CPU. They now have this uh, SG2002, which is quite a change. And they've used two more of the GPO pins. Otherwise, they are pretty much identical. Uh, so they're sticking to this tiny form factor and doing a really good job with it. And it's, again, it's still really light. Um... The, the immediate changes, obvious, they uh, have 256 meg of RAM on this, if you didn't cotton onto that bit already. And they've added another core. Now, this is the interesting bit where everyone on Reddit, and a link to the, I'll put a link to the Reddit discussion about this board below for you. Everyone on Reddit is like, why would you need an ARM chip on a RISC-V processor? Which is really interesting. And I've got my thoughts about that too. But essentially, they've still got the same 906 cores that they had before but they've added an ARM Cortex-A53 core. So apparently you can boot to either, and I don't know how implemented that is yet, but I think it's pretty cool because RISC-V still has, or RISC-V still has a bit to go as far as, you know, implementation, even RVV 1.0 coming, but as far as uh, drivers, support, uh, you know, Linux being standard on RISC-V, which Debian is doing uh, excellently, um, and just making it easier to use. So. They kind of, I guess, give you the option to use the RISC-V core or use the ARM core with this. Uh, and then, of course, you've still got the secondary core on the side, which can run Arduino code or free RTOS, or, which is real-time operating system, I'll just call it RTOS, or anything like that alongside the actual operating system on the primary core, and more about that in a future video. But they've then done some other things. So this now has a one tera operations per second dedicated TPU, uh, that's in int 8 mode, so it's twice as powerful as on the 64 meg. They've got a dedicated or an improved ISP, so it can now do 5 megapixels at 30 FPS with that ISP. And they've added uh, what looks like a little bit more cache. Uh, the block diagrams make it look like there's more cache, which is always good for performance. They've added audio out via GPO 34, which is over here. Um, and they're advertising now that they use the 8051 at the core of the whole thing, which is really interesting because they never used to advertise that. And you can see it's actually on the back of the box now as well. So uh, they're doing good things. I like what they're doing with the space, but I'm very curious about this ARM core. And I want to see, you know, what else is new? The 
the 1.0.7 image was only just released 30 days ago or 28 days ago so i've downloaded it i've stuck it on an sd card we're going to boot it up just see what's in the image if there's anything different have a look at the cat slash proc slash cpu to see if we can see the arm core from there stick a multimeter on that pin to see uh, whether it's by default pulled high or pulled low then we'll pull it in the other direction and see if it boots back up i'd assume not i'm gonna assume this image doesn't support the arm core but i'm curious you're probably curious too so we're going to find out if you want to hold on a tick now i'm just going to wire this up get screen recording going and we'll check that out one moment all right i've got the sd card in it's booted we can see the little blinking lights i'm just using this basic usb a to c 2.0 cable i've got here these cheaper chips so i've got them in the store as well and i've ssh to it as you can see on the screen now now i'm not going to show you all the ssh and connectivity instructions that's in the previous video you can go check out put a link to it below or it might even be at the end of this video or a card up there if i remember what we're going to do now is connect with the username root and the password milk v there we go so if we have a look through the boot up process uh, it's 5.10 ion is reserving 75 meg of ram which we can see there it used to be 32 meg um and then yeah basically just boots through in about eight seconds which is awesome so if we look at free minus m we have no swap which is good because i don't like swap uh on sd cards you're going to ruin your sd card we've got 166 meg of ram free we're only using 15 meg which is excellent so we've got plenty of headroom there uh now if we look at df minus h it has not expanded the root file system to take up the rest of the petition. So you might want to create a data petition and use that, or you might want to expand the file system yourself. There's plenty of ways to do that uh, as personal preference, really. And I'll say a data petition is probably a pretty safe way to go. Now, the really, really interesting part now, cat slash proc slash CPU info. No, we can only see that one RV64 core. And now that's IMA FDVCSU. This is yeah seemingly much the same uh it booted quickly it doesn't use much ram it's got a little blinking light you can turn off with the script what it does have though is uh is this pin which if i got it the right way around i think is uh, 34 which should then boot to the arm environment now this of course the linux build on here isn't for it but i also don't know if this image has two different linux kernels because open sbc sorry open sbi might pick based on the processor. Uh, it's got a little bit of flash memory built in or a bootloader built in from what I understand that will make that decision. So what I'm gonna do now, if we have a look back here, is grab out a multimeter. Where is one of my multimeters? All right, folks, we are back with my new multimeter. Uh, I don't know what I've done to my other one. So let's have a quick look here. I've marked the ground pin there. And if we go down two from that, We've got 3.3 volts out. That's looking good, 3.98. And we haven't crashed it, which is excellent. Now let's pull ground to this one, which is that boot slate, which is showing 1.7 volts. So that's theoretically floating and hasn't crashed it. Now let's try pulling it high. See if we, uh, yeah, see if we kill it. 1.5 volts different to high and it hasn't crashed. Let's, um, give it five volts three volts different there interesting just in case it's uh the multimeter i'm just going to quickly pull it with pins nothing oh well that did something gave it five volts and it immediately immediately crashed and both lights are on it might be dead let's power cycle it see what happens well it did boot back up let's just confirm again pulling that to low did nothing still works pull it to 3.3 nothing so it might still be counting that as low if we pull it to five though it definitely does something or it did before interestingly I must have I must have hit something else because it does not seem to care this time. So this pin might not be implemented at that level. What I'll do now is I'm going to quickly put some uh, pins on the other side and on there so we can watch it boot whilst we're pulling in either direction. Uh, I'll be back in a minute, folks. All right, we're back. 
I've sorted some headers down here onto UART0, and I've sorted some headers on here. I thought red would match. We've then got the CP2104 here. I still have stock of these left as well if you want one. And I'm going to plug the USB back in. We've got putty running. I'm going to watch the boot process like we usually do. That looks pretty normal. It did look like we had an option to actually do something then. Um, let's have another quick look. There's like a press any key. What did it say? Hit any key to stop auto boot. All right. So we get some little uh, interesting 906 terminal here. So let's get straight to it then. Let's start shortening out some pins. See if, uh, see if we kill it. First thing I'm going to do is look at the data sheet again because I keep getting that wrong. So we're going to go grab ground, which is this third pin. And first of all, I'm going to go to the 3.3 volt out, which is, oh, sorry, not the ground that. I'm going to grab uh, the boot switch, which is the sixth pin down, and pull that to ground, which is that one. Now, nothing has happened in the console there, so let's reset it with a power cycle. See if it does anything different. Interestingly, it doesn't boot. Let's make sure that's what it was. Pull that pin. Yep, boot straight away. Put it back on ground. It's not very happy. So I'm not sure if that is going to the ARM core and it's not implemented or, uh, or if it's not at all. Um, I'm slightly confused by that. So let's pull it and instead of putting it on ground let's go to 3.3 volts which is the one next to it. it's handy you could just literally stick a jumper on it uh, this might just kill it so let's reset the terminal so you can see exactly everything that happens including the magic smoke ah what has happened there hang on hang on hang on hang on go back i want to double check all right We've stopped auto boot and we're still at the 906. So it looks like it just isn't implemented yet. It looks like pulling it to ground is the way to go, but the image just doesn't support it. This is still booting. Slowly, there we go. It took a moment to bring up networking. And it's still running on that RV64 core. So, it is awesome. It's just not implemented yet, it seems. Um, I think it's going to be really cool when it is. And I'm not sure how long that's going to be. So, I'd love your feedback on that as well if you know anything about it. Now, on to the giveaway. This is an interesting one. You've all been waiting for it. I'm going to give away 100 bucks worth of stuff. Let's make sure I can actually see what I'm doing on the camera. We have a whole pile of things in here. We've got a Milk V I.O. board, a Milk V camera, a Milk V 64 meg with a header pin soldered on, a brand new Milk V 256 meg without the header pin soldered on. I'm then going to keep going. You're going to need some SD cards for those. So let's throw in two 32 gig SD cards. I don't know what networking you want to use. Uh, they don't have Wi-Fi and there's ethernet built into that but you've got two boards so there's an ethernet module for it as well you're going to need usb cable so there's a usb 2.0 type a to c same as i just used there's also a silicon pine 64 usb uh type c to type c going to throw in a little oled screen for you so you can you know set up some output on them if you want to play with the the digital signal I'm going to throw in a little four pad of buttons for you so you can have some analog input. So you've got input and output. You've got the camera, you've got networking, you've got storage. You, of course, get one of those free PCB rulers, as all orders get. And because you might have to solder some headers on, check this out. That is a USB-powered tiny soldering iron. I'm going to chuck some of these on the store. I haven't yet. I'll include that in case you want to solder. In case you don't have some DuPont cables, I'm going to throw a couple of those in. And you know what? I'm even going to throw in a CP2104 in case you don't have one so you can debug it. That's well over 100 bucks worth of stuff plus shipping. And I'm going to give it away for free in less than two weeks. All you have to do is leave a comment below telling me what you think I should review next, like what the next SBC that I look at should be. Whichever one gets the most upvotes, 
is what I'll review and you will win this. So make sure that you, I'll reply to your comment, but I'll also try to email you. Uh, make sure you're keeping an eye out for it. The next video that goes out in two weeks about an SV, SBC is where I'll announce the winner and what the SBC is gonna be. But because it's based on upvotes, send the link to your friends, get all your mates to upvote it as well. If you wanna win this kit of kind of Milk V Love, uh, which is all from my store, you can buy all of these things on the store. I'll send it to you, express post for free, if you have the idea that everyone loves. So, thanks again to you guys for supporting it. That's why I'm doing this. Thanks again for P to PCBWay for supporting this channel, allowing me to continue doing this. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, I have fun doing this. I love these, these little things here that are just endlessly strange and interesting. There is so much you can do with them. So, I hope you're doing well. Uh, you know... My heart goes out to the, all the people up north are getting slapped by cyclones and floods and all of that. It's, uh, it's a pretty rough start to 2024. But be your best self. Like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. Win yourself 100 bucks worth of free kit. I'll see you guys next time.